Welcome back to the AI Daily Brief. Boy, is there a lot of open AI news today. None of it's huge or transformational. It's just really diverse. As you'll see, there is enough that it will easily fill an episode. First up, we got some more confirmation that OpenAI does appear to be getting ready to launch a search product that will rival Google and other AI native companies like Perplexity. According to Bloomberg, quote, the feature would allow users to ask ChatGPT a question and receive answers that use details from the web with citations to sources such as Wikipedia entries and blog posts. One version of the product also uses images alongside written responses to questions when they're relevant. If a user asks ChatGPT to change a doorknob, for instance, the results might include a diagram to illustrate the task. Bloomberg also gave a shout out to the Twitter sleuths who found search.chatgpt.com last week, but we're still a little bit in the realm of unknown sources. The other OpenAI related thing from last week was, of course, that mysterious GPT-2 chatbot that appeared on an LLM ranking site and which seemed to many to be more performant and advanced than anything else out there. After it got all of that attention last week, it was taken off of Limsys, but then a couple days ago it came back. Once again, people are really impressed. This time it was called I'm a Good GPT-2 Chatbot, and much of the response I saw was people like Pietro Sherano, who wrote, I'm a good GPT-2 chatbot is so good that it created a code interpreter that uses Claude Opus for me. Excuse me as I faint in ontological shock. Lior at AlphaSignalAI tweeted a network error due to high traffic that seemed to point to OpenAI as confirmation that it was behind the chatbot. There was also Sam Altman, who on May 5th tweeted, I'm a good GPT-2 chatbot. Siki Chen from Runway suggested that this chatbot also revealed that ChatGPT had already stealth launched the search feature. Siki writes, did ChatGPT already stealth launch search? ChatGPT used to reject prompts asking for current events, but now I get this without even a little browsing with Bing message. He shared an image where he had asked, what's the latest news on this I'm a good GPT-2 chatbot model? ChatGPT responds, the I'm a good GPT-2 chatbot model that has recently surfaced in the AI community is wrapped in a bit of mystery. This model appearing on the Limsys chatbot arena generated considerable interest due to its sudden appearance and impressive performance, sparking speculation about its origins and capabilities. There were initial reports that it performed better than GPT-4, but concrete details about its design or purpose were not disclosed and it was subsequently taken offline. What was interesting about this is that it also cited its sources, pointed to Daily AI and some other sources as where it had drawn this information. And again, this was not technically supposed to be the Browse with Bing version. All this is to say, there is even more evidence now that search with ChatGPT is coming, but it seems also like we might have to wait just a little bit longer to find out more about it. The information reported earlier this week that OpenAI was considering postponing an event that had been planned for this Thursday, where they had been intending to show off a set of new products, including presumably this search product. The information says the spokesperson from OpenAI declined to elaborate on the reasons for the change. If this alone were the OpenAI news slate, it would be a lot, but we are not even close to done. Yesterday, OpenAI announced that they were working on new tools to detect AI-created images. The blog post was called Understanding the Source of What We See and Hear Online. There were a couple things that were announced as part of this post. One was that OpenAI was joining the steering committee of something called C2PA, the Coalition for Content Provenance and Authenticity. Earlier this year, they wrote, We began adding C2PA metadata to all images created and edited by DALI 3, our latest image model, in ChatGPT and the OpenAI API. We will be integrating C2PA metadata for Sora, our video generation model, when the model is launched broadly as well. They also announced that they were working on new technology in this area, including what they describe as temper-resistant watermarking, i.e. marking digital content like audio with an invisible signal that aims to be hard to remove, as well as detection classifiers or tools that use artificial intelligence to assess the likelihood that content originated from generative models. As part of the announcement then, they shared that they were opening applications for access to OpenAI's image detection classifier to a first group of testers. They write that in their internal tests, the classifier correctly identified around 98% of Dolly 3 images, and less than 0.5% of non-AI generated images were incorrectly tagged as being from Dolly 3. They write the classifier handles common modifications like compression, cropping, and saturation changes with minimal impact on its performance, but other types of augmentations, such as adjusting the hue or adding moderate amounts of Gaussian noise, can make a significant difference. Lastly, on this front, Microsoft and OpenAI also announced that they were launching a $2 million societal resilience fund, which is basically all about combating deepfakes. Then there was another blog post from yesterday, this time called Our Approach to Data and AI. The big TLDR of this comes in the section called We Respect the Choices of Creators and Content Owners on AI. They write, Decades ago, the robots.txt standard was introduced and voluntarily adopted by the internet ecosystem for web publishers to indicate what portions of websites web crawlers could access. Last summer, OpenAI pioneered the use of web crawler permissions for AI, enabling web publishers to express their preferences about the use of their content in AI. We take these signals into account each time we train a new model. 
That said, we understand that these are incomplete solutions, as many creators do not control websites where their content may appear, and content is often quoted, reviewed, remixed, reposted, and used as inspiration across multiple domains. They conclude, we need an efficient, scalable solution for content owners to express their preferences about the use of their content in AI systems. OpenAI's answer is something they're calling Media Manager. It's a tool that will, quote, enable creators and content owners to tell us what they own and specify how they want their works to be included or excluded from machine learning research and training. They didn't explain exactly how, but that's the idea. There was a lot of commentary here. Some people were pretty skeptical. But Brian Merchant noted that, quote, the mere fact that OpenAI feels it needs to release a statement about training data principles and to announce a program to let creators opt out of having their works included in training data shows how powerful the movement against it has become. And then finally, we get to today, where OpenAI announced something that they called their model spec. Sam Altman writes, We are introducing the model spec, which specifies how our model should behave. We will listen, debate, and adapt this over time, but I think it will be very useful to be clear when something is a bug versus a decision. We want to give users lots of control of AI with some hard boundaries that society eventually agrees on. This is another step. While this is definitely very different than Anthropic's constitutional approach to AI, in the sense that this is a public-facing document, not a document that specifically is meant to inform AI behavior, it still has some of the same ideas of articulating what they're trying to have their AI models be. So the approach includes one, objectives, broad general principles that provide a directional sense of the desired behavior, such as assisting the developer and end user, benefiting humanity, and reflecting well on open AI. There are tools, instructions that address complexity and help ensure safety and legality. These include things like follow the chain of command, comply with applicable laws, don't provide information hazards, respect creators and their rights, protect people's privacy, and don't respond with not safe for work content. Lastly, there are default behaviors, or as they describe, guidelines that are consistent with objectives and rules, providing a template for handling conflicts and demonstrating how to prioritize and balance objectives. These include things like assuming best intentions from the user or developer, asking clarifying questions when necessary, being as helpful as possible without overstepping, assuming an objective point of view, encouraging fairness and kindness and discouraging hate, and more. Joanne Jang, who worked on this product, writes, I'm personally excited about this concept of a model spec for three reasons. One, there will be more clarity on whether something is a policy or an RLHF bug. Two, principles are easier to debate and get feedback on versus hyper-specific screenshots or abstract feel-good statements. The way that she describes this is, it's easy for most people to agree on models should be something, but the more important questions lie deeper in thorny scenarios. For example, how should the model engage with someone who claims the Earth is flat? Third, she writes, model spec feedback will help us steer our efforts and steerability. An explicit non-goal, she writes, for the model spec is to reach consensus on a one-size-fits-all model. That will never happen. We want to give users and developers as much control as possible while staying within hard boundaries that people understand. Hearing feedback on where and how everyone wants to steer the model is helpful in A, designing a more rigorous survey process, and B, informing the research and product roadmap. So just tons and tons of stuff happening. But when push comes to shove, what everyone's really waiting for is the next big products. OpenAI CEO Brad Lightcap told a conference this week that today's AI systems will seem laughably bad, his words, in 12 months after they ship GPT-5. However, Gurgly Oros writes, OpenAI was amazing in 2022-2023 because they shipped a product that spoke for itself. Jaws dropped by those using it and seeing it for themselves. To see the company hype up future unreleased products feels like a major shift. If it's that good, why not ship it like before? It seems like we will get answers to that question sooner rather than later-ish. But for now, still plenty of open AI news to consume a cycle. That is going to do it for today's AI Daily Brief. Until next time, peace.